Welcome to Social Permaculture Online Bootcamp, a video series about empowerment and resilience during the coronavirus crisis. I'm Ben Habib and I'm going to be your guide for this journey. Now it's easy to lapse into feelings of powerlessness and despondency while we're social distancing, but I don't want to go down that road. And I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you don't want to go down that road either. Of course, it's easy to say that, but harder to do. And to escape this spiral of powerlessness, we really need a plan. And that's what Social Permaculture Online Bootcamp is all about. In this first episode of the series, I'm going to introduce the rationale for Social Permaculture Online Bootcamp. I'm going to explain why I'm producing these videos, both for myself and my communities. I'll briefly touch on what permaculture is and specifically where social permaculture fits underneath the umbrella of the broader permaculture movement. And I'll finish up with an independent learning activity for you to help us get grounded and confront our anxieties about the COVID-19 crisis and to prepare ourselves for right action moving forward. In each episode, I'll explore an issue, a problem or an anxiety associated with the COVID-19 crisis. And then we'll use some insights from permaculture to think about how we might respond to it. I'll then share a brief activity for you to complete on your own. Now, I'm here to facilitate your own journey, so I'm not gonna be prescriptive. What I am offering here is to help you chart your own path forward based on your available resources and your unique circumstances, because that's what permaculture is about. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'll share some tools with you to help you systematically figure it out for yourself. Most importantly, these videos are about transmutation, uh, about drawing on Bill Mollison's idea that the seeds of the solution lie in the problem itself. The breakdown of our economy and our institutions that we're seeing through COVID-19 and also with the broader ecological crisis and the climate change crisis, all of this is creating a window of opportunity for something new to emerge. And this new thing, this new way of doing things, this new society is going to evolve from our adaptations to this present crisis that we're in right now with COVID-19. Now, my hope for the activities in these videos is that they help give you some focus and some agency while you're in self-isolation, that they help you reclaim some power and dignity uh, as we face these challenges, uh, that they help you to see where you fit into the world around you in a new way, and that when you emerge from your self-isolation, you're armed with a toolkit for building connection, for building community and building resilience, for building this new society that's emerging on the other side of the crisis. The material and the activities in these videos is drawn from a few different influences. First, from my contributions to the Permaculture Design course at Ceres Community Environment Park in Melbourne, where I teach patterns in communities, social landscapes and economic regeneration strategies. It comes from my academic research into international climate change politics, environmental security in Northeast Asia and the global permaculture movement. It comes from co-leading environment and sustainability themed study tours to China and South Korea for my undergraduate students from La Trobe University, which we did in conjunction with Series Global. It comes from my advocacy on mental health and from my developing research into applying permaculture pattern logics to critique the individualization of responsibility for mental illness. And it comes from working in and with activist community organisations on environmental and social justice issues. But most importantly, the material in this video series draws from what I've learned from a number of extraordinary permaculture mentors, some of whom I've worked with directly and know well, and others who I've never met but are really into their work. And I owe all of these people an extremely large debt of gratitude. Everyone in the permaculture movement has a unique contribution to make to this larger project of building the new society. And through the series, I'll link to other people who are doing amazing work in the permaculture space. 
It might feel like we're in a moment of extreme breakdown, but it's in this moment right now that the foundations of the next ism are being created. The foundations of the key ideas that are going to shape how our society evolves from here over the coming century. And this next ism, how it shapes up, are going to be shaped by how we answer questions like these. What kind of life is it that we really want to live? How can we promote both a human flourishing and simultaneously embrace our custodianship of the natural world? What are the relationships of economic production, consumption and exchange that'll take care of the needs of all of us, not just a few of us? What models of governance and of organisational structure can give us agency and dignity in making decisions about our lives and our work? What can we do to process the past and present injustices that are plaguing our world, to remove the structural oppressions and the power imbalances that marginalise and traumatise so many people? But more immediately, how can we get through the next day? How can we get through the COVID-19 crisis with a conscious eye towards what comes afterward? We can start building alternatives right now through our practice, through our actions, in this day-to-day -day survival and adaptation process. And this is what permaculture practice can be through this crisis. It can be the methodology for building those alternatives. So 2020, this cascading series of crises that we seem to be in with the bushfires in Australia and now with COVID-19 and, and various other crises around the world. Uh, everything feels broken and it feels like this breakdown is accelerating, but this also is not a surprise. This is the moment that we've been preparing for as permies and as environmentalists for decades. You know, the limits to growth report back in 1972 predicted that we'd be facing significant societal breakdown now uh, in the early 2020s. And now we're here and it's happening. But we've been preparing for this for a long time and this is our moment to step forward uh, and seize the day. But of course, grasping that fact intellectually is much different to feeling it emotionally. And I want to share with you something that happened to me last Friday night. You know, I'd been in isolation for a week I was sitting on the couch watching the news and, and watching some pundits sort of pick apart the latest developments in the, the COVID-19 government measures uh, that were being brought into place here in Australia. I was looking at the cascading economic breakdown and people losing their jobs. Uh, I was also feeling a lot of loneliness. Uh, you know, my son lives interstate. I won't be able to go and see him for at least six months until the Australian spring. So that was really hitting me. Uh, I'm not in a position to live with my partner at the moment. So there's uncertainty about uh, how often I'll get to see her as you know, increasing levels of lockdown kick into place. Uh, anxieties over this unseen virus threat about actually getting the virus and maybe passing it on and, and what that would mean for my health. Just this general unease about our world being turned upside down overnight, even though it's pre long predicted, even though we've been preparing for it, actually living it in the moment, uh, it really hit me bang in the chest in that moment. I was just sitting there on the couch crying, tears coming down my face as the full emotional weight of the moment hit me. Uh, and I think everyone probably has their, their similar moment like that. So it was really after that moment and sitting with that feeling of despair uh, through Friday night that I decided to do something constructive, that I decided not to succumb to powerlessness and to find some purpose in the moment and to do something constructive in my self-isolation. And that's what these videos are about. First and foremost, I need to do this for me to help me cope with this moment and get through. Uh, yeah, with that in mind, these videos are going to be raw. So the production value you know, is not going to be Oscar winning cinematography. There's going to be occasional swearing, uh, but I think raw fits the moment. It, whatever we're doing, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be uh, decisive and conscious. 
But beyond my immediate emotional needs to produce these videos, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a researcher and academic, and I'm really conscious of my role within the greater ecosystem of social change. So I'm conscious that I'm in a position where I can share my knowledge with other people and also be able to share the collective wisdom of the permaculture movement through these videos. Uh, I'm able to act as a bridge person. I can facilitate relationship building and flows of information between different communities. You know, because of my professional role, I sit on a fence between lots of different communities and lots of different groups and can be that facilitator person. More broadly, our leaders are encouraging us to spread kindness right now as we collectively try and get through this crisis period. Well, permaculture design thinking is a method for operationalizing kindness. So think of the permaculture ethics and think of the, the design principles uh, and the kindness that's encoded into those. So being able to share that wisdom, uh, this is my small contribution to that end through these videos. But I'd like to ask you, where do you think you fit in the greater ecosystem of social change? And what is it you think you can do within your web of relationships to make yourself more resilient and also to improve the lives of the people around you?